Well, I'll say one thing for this planet. It does produce some spectacularly ugly people. I was talking about you, Joe. Right. Drumbot Brian. Are we um, are we all set up? With sound, please. And these mortals are just gonna perspire more if we wait. <laughs> In which case, Trumbot Brian, I believe you're our pilot. What? What? Sorry, we need to say levels. Sorry. Oh, joy. Violin. Violin. Johnny. Do you know how to work the banjo? Tim. I'm doing what he says, Johnny. be so good as to uh <laughs> killers and vagabonds liars and thieves we are the mechanisms a band of immortal space pirates roving through the universe on the starship aurora having fun where possible violence where necessary and if we're very lucky both at the same time. Allow me a brief moment of self-indulgence to introduce to you the crew of our mighty starship. You've already met our pilot, Jerome Brian. Gunpowder Tim, our master of arms. Ashes O'Reilly, quartermaster from the monster planet below. Two new members of our crew, Baron Marius von Raum, our ship's doctor. Neither a Baron nor a doctor. And Raffaella Lacognizzi, our science officer, as cruel and brutal as she is, science. And the toy soldier, of course, who is, as usual, present. And last, but the opposite of least, myself, Johnny Deville, your humble captain. First mate. And together we are...
every one of us wants, well, <laughs> with the exception of the toy soldier, we were all once mortal and boring like your good selves. Until something within each of us broke, shattered beyond repair, and was replaced by a fascinating individual by the name of Dot Carmilla, who unfortunately has since fallen out an airlock. <laughs> we have, each of us, innumerable stories, but let us start with what is obviously the most interesting, fascinating, and some might call it riveting, my own. <laughs> How I got my mechanical heart. You see, I come from a small world of New Texas, where the red giant beats down, dyeing everything a deep crimson. My mother was a tailor, but she never sewed me shit. My father was a gambling man who, well, you'll see. Any up, gentlemen, the game is new. Texas Hold'em, hero, one-eyed jacks. We only play with 52 cards, no jokers. But suicide kings are wild. Welcome to the house, my boy. Come in, sit, have a cigar. I hear that you're a damn hand at the cards. Always a pleasure to see Billy Van Genesis, boy. I trust you'll give your daddy my regards. Now, it's about your father that I want to speak to you. You see, he description for me.
never see no gun behind me and I'll never go much at home. similar story and well why stop at just nine when there are so many fascinating tales to tell <laughs> gunpowder tim what a fascinatingly good idea let's tell your story it came to pass about 300 years in the future ago <laughs> that the moon kaiser commissioned the construction of a vast lunar cannon aimed directly at London. So, soon enough, every man, woman, and child strong enough to hold a rifle was conscripted and sent off to fight for Queen and country. I was serving in the 42nd Starborn under Queen George the 12th, while Tim was busy being mortal like a wanker. <laughs> he and his best friend, Bertie, took off to war. <laughs> Oh, I can almost hear the recruiter's ad now. Grab yourself a laser light and serve your queen with a smile, smile, smile. Light them with your lucifer and burn them clean. Smile, boys, that's the style. Come on a grand adventure against a foe most vile. So grab yourself a laser light and serve your queen. When they got there, it was very different. The surface of the moon had been abandoned for centuries, as all the living, and more importantly, the fighting, took place in caverns and tunnels that riddled the surface, deep into the core. It was muddy, it was dusty, it was cold, and usually it was pitch dark, save for the muzzle flashes of the energy of the enemy. And occasionally your comrades catching fire as the invisible beams of heat swept through no man's land. But worse, you always had to have one ear open for the alarms. If it was a gas attack, you could usually get to a respirator or let the pumps take care of it. But if it was a radiation attack, you'd need to get in your foxhole and cover yourself with lead or you'd be cooked from the inside out. I was having a great time. <laughs> But Tim and Bertie, well, they had their own way of dealing with things. Gas last night, and gas the night before. Can I be gas tonight if we're never gas no more? When you're gassed, you're sick as you can be. Cause the kind of mustard gas are much too much for me. They're choking us, they're choking us. One respirator and it broken us. Thank you, lucky stars, that the pumps still work Cause coughing up your lungs can be a chore Cooked last night, and cooked the night before Gonna be cooked tonight, we never cook no more When you're cooked, you're hot as you can be Cause the Kaiser wants to microwave the British infantry They're boring us, they're boring us One less sheep between the four of us Thank you, lucky stars, that you taste so good Cause you wouldn't want your corpse to go to waste And on and on this went Every night was a fucking sing-song <laughs> Unlike... Unlike these days Yes But it was at this point we discovered something interesting about the toy soldier You see, it obeyed any order to the letter But... 
it became apparent it didn't actually matter which uniform you were wearing when you gave the order. We first discovered this when we captured an enemy corporal with a rather familiar moustache. Later, it was giving us our orders as a colonel. I even hear you made general at one point for the other side. Well, what can I say? Your uniforms were all green and rumpled, and their helmets had spikes on them. <laughs> I should, at this point, make sure that uh, no connection is drawn to our Baron Marius, who is, uh, lots of militaries have spikes on their helmets. <laughs> Don't make a thing out of this. <laughs> anyway. The point was, it seemed happy enough after its fashion. Do you want to retune that? Yeah, I'd like to retune that. <laughs> Way to break I the narrative. you and your moisture. <laughs> your sick moisture. <laughs> See my guns. Can I introduce you to a concept, Tim, by the name of narrative flow? <laughs> no. It's even worse. It's even worse. Stand up to pass the time. So, you know how you're walking through Sivia 7 and there are all those mutants that uh, leap on you and eat your flesh? What's the deal with that? I mean, did the Syrian High Command say, hey, you know what we don't have enough of? Flesh eating monstrosities, let's make some of them. Tough crowd. Are we good? For now. Anyway, the toy soldier seemed happy enough after its fashion. <laughs> when little generals play at war, they don't care what they're fighting for. Playground battlefields are rife with soldier toys bereft of life, marching ever through the black. Orders fly, retreat, attack. Whoever commands a toy obeys. Out in the stars and far away, as children grow, the toys they build. finished yet, so don't applaud mid-story. Especially you. This continued for three, maybe four years, until Tim's best friend Bertie did what young metal men at war are prone to do and died. The details are muddy and quite frankly hilarious. But what's more interesting is the effect it had on young Tim. Well, man, I don't know. The men with curry have to protect the man. They are the men who are the men who are the men who are the men They try to save the man. But I haven't made a dent. And they thought we'll run like one. Take the risk that's in the water. Show the moment when I run there and tread on the floor. Show the moment, color on air and on the floor. 
So 1 powder Tim cut a bloody red path through cannon and through infantry, dealing out his wrath. Battalions were gathered and forged for his destruction, but all of them fell to his maddened corruption. Such violence must end though when Tim's luck ran dry, as a Lenny lined the rifle up and let the lead fly. And when he awoke, he was chilled to the bone, kneeling unarmed at the Moon Kaiser's throne. And the Kaiser just smiled with his crown all askew, saying, well now, my friend, it's a pleasure to meet you. It seems you've made a habit of hacking up my boy, so I'll return the favor with what means I can employ an extended execution by royalty appointed. And I warn you, the last one left me very disappointed. So the Kaiser opens up a box and shows young Tim my head, fresh severed, but I winked at him. I guess I wasn't dead. Seeing there was hope for him, Tim looked around the room. The toy soldier in uniform with a royal guardsman's plume. Accidentally, it had joined the Kaiser's personal guard, but it still followed any order if you gave it nice and hard. Behind the throne, the great gun stood aimed right at London town. Tim had his plan, and he prepared to bring the despot down. When the lunar cannon loaded, with his fuse prepared to light, Tim looked the soldier in the eye, and he gave the order, fight! Chaos came to the Kaiser's men, the violence quick and mad, as the wooden man obeyed the mission briefing that it had. I spun my severed head and bit the Kaiser on the nose. He screamed and shock and dropped me, so I went after his toes. Confusion reigned, Tim took his leave and ran towards the gun and turned the dial so right around the cannon barrel swung. He didn't know the firing codes, it wouldn't stop him long. For the brutal hymn of gunpowder remained his favorite song and with a barrel from the armory, he set the fuse alight and fled into the life pod where the Kaiser spent the night. The pod was shielded hard against the force of 20 suns, but Tim couldn't get the visor closed before the fuse was done. So when the lunar cannon fired and blew the moon out of the sky, the piercing brightness of the blast burned out our hero's eyes. And with the force of every weary soldier's tunnel bomb, the explosion ripped through the full moon's heart. And like that, the moon was gone. And that, boys and girls, is why there's no longer a moon. <laughs> It's why in your monodirectional time stream there won't be a moon in like 300 years. Do they really only go one way through time? Pretty much. <laughs> Poor fuckers. <laughs> anyway. Who next? Who next? Not you or you. We haven't quite got your stories out of you yet. Heard you have... Ashes. <laughs> Our very own quartermaster, Ashes O'Reilly. You're gonna need this. Now, Ashes here is from Malone, a dreary little world as corrupt as you could ask for. Spent most of their youth in and out of institutions, orphanages, and warehouses full of flammable material. <laughs> Until a charismatic stranger came along, not, I hasten to add, my good self. <laughs> you are strange, though. <laughs> it's called Lucky Sevens. Hit it. <laughs> Let's get 
get out of here. Uncle Mickey will show you the way. We can use your pyromaniacal talents. Ashes, what do you say? the end of Drumbot Brian. Aww. Oh, don't worry, there's going to be more, but uh, his compositional circuits are a little bit on the fritz, so we've only got the very end, the bit that deals with him dying. Yay! You know, the good bit. <laughs> so, well, I'll leave it to be told by the lovely 
Rafaela Lacognizzi. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I still need a microphone. <laughs> there was a man both good and true All alone and lonely Branded a witch for what he could do Lost in the cosmos lonely They took him and threw him into the sky All alone Lost in the cosmos, lonely In the cold of space, his eyes did blink All alone and lonely Crystals glimmering, his body to freeze Lost in the cosmos, lonely Slowly, slowly, frost broken drama nicely. <laughs> right. Well, of course, we've talked a lot about us, which is reasonable because we are fascinating <laughs> and important and Don't vitally, vitally important. But occasionally we meet interesting people along our travels, and this song's about one of them, not you. No. <laughs> this is this is about a hero we meant on one of our jaunts to a an alternate version timeline of Earth, somewhere around the Wild West. She rode into perdition with her posse at her heel. Her marshals bagged with names and her soul was made of steel. In seven days she peaked some Lara order into town and rode in the desert oh, as the sun was Then it was Lil, Lil Lemon. She wore a coat as black as night. Outlaw, monster, or demon. All fell before her badges blazing light. Upon a wave of ghost fire, she strode into the maze. With six barrels on her pistol and her trigger all ablaze. Vengeance for her father was what the stranger sought, but her bullet showed no mercy to the evil that she caught. In Champlain, she made damn sure that triads would despair. Kang Tam, red pedal soon will quail beneath her stare. The principal sank, the wars began, the city was on fire, but no one's chi was strong enough to stand before her ire. Her name was Lil, Lil Lemon. She wore a coat as black as night How long, monster or demon Or fell for her badges blazing light Thank you. 
Alas, my father's killer descended from the sky. An angel of grim named Gara Black with murder in his eye. A thousand men had tried and failed to bring him to the ground. But Lemon was the one to finally put him six feet down. And when at last our hero fell with a dagger in her back, she died a smile on her lips as the ground began to crack. And they say that when the California moon is shining bright, you may see her bashful shining as she fights the hero's fight. Her name was Lil, Lil Hammer. She wore a coat as black as night. Outlaw, monster, or demon. Oh, hell for her badges blazing light. Her name was Lil, Lil Lemon. She wore a coat as black, a coat as black as night. Outlaw, monster, or demon. Oh, hell for her firm resolve. Oh, hell for her pistol cold. Oh, hell for her badges blazing light. Of course, it's not all heroes and villains and fighting. Sometimes we like to just relax, Yay! chill out. In fact, there was a brochure we got for a lovely looking plant. I think, I think it was a brochure. Um, it was in a bottle and scrawled in blood, but it sounded lovely. Uh, what was it called? Oh, Plant of the Lotus Eaters, that was the one. How did the, uh, how did the message go again? We stopped to take on water on a long laconic shore Broken and defeated by the searing skies of war When through the dusty darkness we glimpsed a glowing flame And soon the mild-eyed melancholy lotus eaters came And they said Quite a struggle, watch the trees They don't have to toil to drop their fruit or shed their leaves Mountains will crumble, time will claim the strongest city walls. After all, you're with the lotus eaters now. No need to worry how the world spins round. No need to keep your head out of the clouds. Why can't the whole world go around? Cause here we bore you, need the lotus leaves. We'll send you on a slumber swing sound. So stick around. Wake up, you're dead behind the eyes We haven't reached our home and there are battles still to fight What happened to the spark that fear and fury would ignite? I've lost you to the lotus and his language into lies Stop, wake up, you're dead behind the eyes We haven't reached our home and there are battles still to fight What happened to the spark that fear and fury would ignite? I've lost you to the lotus and its language into lies Let us stay what will last? Nothing but fractured fragments of the dark and dreadful past. What's to fight for? All will fall. Better to make a stand than stranded with no hope at all. As they call. No, with all the seaters now. No need to worry how the world spins round No need to keep your head out of the clouds Why couldn't a hope of all work bound? Yes, here we fall, you need the lotus leaves We'll send you on a slumber sweet and sound So stick around Yo, the lotus leaves Yo, the lotus leaves No need to worry how the world spins round No need to keep your head out why cling to hope of 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 hope I'm so tired. I searched inside me, but the spark of fury had expired. It's transpired. I'm with the lotus eaters now. No need to worry now, though I'm not proud that others make the world keep spinning round. Forget the life you left behind. Before the lotus drives it from my mind, I write these words for followers to find. 
don't get entwined You'll lose your mind <laughs>